Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently trading at 37,735, down 2.29%. Ethereum currently trading at 2477, down 0.59%. If you're new to the channel, of course, welcome. And I'd like to let you know that everything I do for you is free. If you're returning, it's great to see you again. Seven days a week, I share my experience as a full-time technical trader with over two decades of experience to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Rule 719, let go. This is a really, really important rule. When you are trading and investing, you'll often make mistakes. They're not mistakes at all. They're just learning experiences, but they can be painful. It's painful to lose money, especially a lot of money. It's really important that you just learn from whatever it is and just let go. Rule 719 is also a fantastic rule to live by. Our community is focused on obtaining real wealth. That's money plus a lot of other beautiful things that make life meaningful. One of the things that's really important when you let go of past mistakes, trauma, fear and limiting beliefs, you are on the path to real wealth. Every single person deserves and is worthy of real wealth. There's a very nice quote from Deepak Chopra. In the process of letting go, you will lose many things from the past, but you will find yourself. Isn't that beautiful? It's absolutely correct. When you're trading and investing, as we always know that all investors become traders whenever they buy or sell, as you're trading, you will find that mistakes are just a natural part. You may miss a move. You may take more loss than you anticipated. These things are not mistakes. That's just the market teaching you. It's really important to let go of any negative feelings. Just learn from the experience. You'll be fine. Rule 174, T-Cube method, trend, timing, and trigger. We're looking at the trend component now. We use the KS process to determine the true trend. Investors can pick many investment vehicles. It really just comes down to risk and preference. Putting money in the S&P 500, the stock market, over the past one year would have returned 34%. Gold would have lost 11% of its value. Bitcoin up from one year ago, 237%. These returns come with a lot of volatility. It's really important to manage that understanding of what volatility is. Bitcoin and cryptos can go up and down by 25, 35, 40% in just a few days. It's really important that you be aware of this. It's not like the stock market. Let's have a look at active addresses. 820,918 active addresses for Bitcoin and mining reward value $34.6 million. The financial markets can be incredibly volatile. Bitcoin is many, many, many more times volatile than conventional stock market assets. That means that we have to have an early warning system. That's what this episode is all about. Let's check out the Bitcoin trend. A knowledge gem for you is to understand that the stock market is open around 32 and a half hours per week. Crypto trades seven, seven days by 24 hours. It's open 168 hours per week. It literally never sleeps. For every one hour, the stock market is open. Crypto is open 5.17 hours. This adds to a lot of the volatility. It's really important that you understand that. That's a knowledge gem that most people overlook. It's really important. When we do technical analysis, we're looking at reversals in trends. This is basically the peak from the 14th of April. Now, what do we notice happening here? We made a low here, but this was a higher low at A. We then made pretty much a lower 
low here at C. Also, there was a trend line coming up here and there was fresh air underneath that line. That's called negative air. That's a gem for you. Negative air is a problem. It means that the resistance is so strong, it's pushing back on price. That was our first warning sign on the 14th of April that something was wrong with crypto. We look across here at this line, it got cut on the 18th of April. Price did its best to get back up to this trend line, but that negative air was pushing it down. When price is under one of these trend lines and it's experiencing negative air, that's really, really bad. If we drew a trend line up here, when it cut here, we knew we were in a lot of trouble. Just a thing, I noticed that YouTubers were saying around this period of time, go all in and more. It will never be cheaper. The blow off top and melt your face off rally is next. And I reached out to many YouTubers and I said, please inform your community that there is a real problem from from back in basically from the 18th of April, I started reaching out to people and they basically just said, no, no, everything is fine. Technically, when you understand technical analysis, these sort of things are not fine. You can do a risk off movement. We are never trying to time the top or the bottom because we only realize the top is in play after it's occurred. But it's very, very important to do these early warning systems. If we look at price from that time onwards, it really plummeted down. So going forward a little bit more in time, when the price was around here, from the, about the 12th of July onwards, the YouTubers <laughs> the influencers were saying Bitcoin is going to 10,000 to 20,000 all the models are broken the bull market is over and none of them could understand this uptick in price we know from our analysis that the bull market is very much intact now influencers are talking about going to 500 to 700,000 in this cycle you can see how quickly these influencers change their minds and when they look back, they say they got it all right, but they didn't. I will always let you know just what I see. If I see things weakening, I will tell you. That's really why I started this channel in the first place. To understand the overall trend of Bitcoin, we break the market into three distinct phases. Bull market psychology, just shown as these sunny zones in yellow the night of the bear market in red and there will be red to follow and the consolidation phase in which is pretty much dawn this is through the KS model which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology we are in the bull market psychology segment of market price structure you can see that many many people you see this all the time on YouTube they compare the sunshine of the bull market to the darkness of the bear market to the dawn of consolidation in one hit. That's really, really bad. Different psychologies are playing out when it's sunshine, when it's nighttime and when it's dawn. They're incomparable mathematically. I always say compare the same psychologies. Compare sunlight to sunlight, darkness to darkness, consolidation to consolidation. I look at this from the view of a former stats lecturer in first and second year stats. It's really important. A lot of people look at pure price action and they don't account for the psychology of the market. Another gem is that many commentators only look at the price action and fail to see what is actually happening and what is driving price. Cryptos are the essential upgrade to the current internet. They convert the current internet into the internet of value. The internet of value, as measured by total crypto users, is growing exponentially. In fact, literally over the past six months, global crypto users in January 2021 were 106 million. By June 21, they were 221 million. 
That's a growth of 115 million new users in just six months, an average of around 19.2 million new users per month over six months. That will become reflected in the price. Another knowledge gem is to understand that crypto is kind of like a gold rush that keeps on rushing. It is hammered in by tops that are driven by euphoria and bottoms that are driven by utter despair called capitulation. At the current period of time, we see neither euphoria or capitulation. Just like in any gold rush, as people are called into the market at higher and higher prices, it drives up what's called relative unrealized profit. When relative unrealized profit gets very, very high, prices become unsustainable and we get this incredibly sharp sell off. Remember comparing sunshine to sunshine to sunshine. Some particular segments of sunshine can have twin suns, others just one sun. The trend is our friend. When we look at realized cap hodl waves, what we're seeing is three spikes, a spike here, a spike here, a spike here, per sunny segment, psychological sunny segment. We can see one, two, three sunny segment spikes. We go across to the current time period, we only see one, we expect two more. It's very common for large organizations to transfer their Bitcoin off exchanges. The number of transfers to exchanges is generally a sign of selling pressure. We can see here in the last sunny segment, we had this spike up of transfers to exchanges across all exchanges. We see we're just quite low at the moment. When we look at the long view model, what we're seeing is sunlight compared to sunlight compared to sunlight. We're just getting started. We've had basically two black swan events in this current market structure. One with the miners shutting down from China, the China miner problem, and the other one too much liquidity, too much money in the system because of excess money printing by the Fed. Now you may look at something like this and say, wow, Ken, that's, that's just getting smaller and smaller. I'll just show you something really quickly. Ooh, not really. It's getting larger and larger over time because it's on a log graph. It looks a bit squashed. If you read any of the financial press, you'll be acutely aware that there's the potential for a health related black swan event through the Delta strain. The last time we had a sell off caused by COVID and the US liquidity crisis, Bitcoin decreased by nearly 64%. That absolutely decimated the alts. That happened over 30 days. That's why we always need to do an early warning system and keep our eye on things daily. You can imagine many people were looking at this and said, oh, it's just buy the dip, buy the dip. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes we need to be really, really careful and risk off to save portfolios from being crushed. The good thing is when we can actually identify the falling knife, we can have incredible gains. Minus 63.32% when it recovered to its previous peak that it was at, it increased by price by 172.73%. The stock market sold off about half that, negative 32.1% and came up 47.28% afterwards. You can see how it's so important to be able to detect black swans and they do leave footprints. They're not hidden. Looking for the health footprints, we can see over the last seven days, weekly cases for the Delta strain have increased 12%. We're looking for countries to go negative. That's why I've highlighted it in green here. If we change to total population, countries ranked by their population, we want more and more of these greens and less of the pluses. We can see from this analysis that we are in the first, second, we are in the third wave. 
The market indices also need an early warning system to detect underpinning structural weakness. Let's have a look through the global indices. It's also really important to understand where specific countries are in terms of their recovery. If they're in early stage recovery, there are very accommodative fiscal policies put in place. You can see the majority of countries around the world are literally in early to before mid stage recovery. It's good to keep this in mind. Let's look at the stock markets of those countries. We'll be starting our analysis with the US stock market because it's the by far the largest percentage share of all global stock market value coming in at around 56%. The first thing we do is look at the VIX. That's the market's fear gauge. We can see fear is elevating inside the market currently. All the analysis we do together is from a crypto stance. Let's have a look at the inverse VIX. Now, how do you get an inverse VIX? You put the normal VIX in, which looks like this, and then you invert its scale just like that. We look at the NASDAQ 100. We can see that it's holding this support fear is running rampant in the market but it looks like it might have bottomed out a little we'll just keep our eye on it at the moment the nasdaq 100 is holding support what i've done for you here this gold line is the price of bitcoin in real time we're always interested in understanding the association between bitcoin and everything else it's really powerful this is the inverse VIX. That also gives us some edges. You can see how the inverse VIX is really playing out on the market. Looking at the S&P 500, it's just above support, but it's forming a bit of a problematic candle at the moment. We'll see what happens. I've just made the inverse of the VIX a little bit lighter so you can see the price action better. We can see the Russell 2000 has shown weakness here. It's basically at support. The Dow Jones index is a big, basically midway between support and resistance at the moment. Let's go through the global indices. We can see Canada here showing strength. China's composite index is just coming up to test that resistance. China's technology index has been hammered recently. It's well below that resistance. India's Sensec market is really showing a lot of power. It's breaking out. South Korea's market, the Kospi 200, is showing a lot of power as well. Japan's Nikkei 225 index is showing suppression of price. It's going down towards that lower boundary of support. Mexico's IPC index is showing strength. It wants to party. Brazil's index has bounced off that support, is seeking to reaffirm support at that lower level. The UK index has got above that resistance and is treating it as support now. If we were really concerned about the Delta variant causing stock markets to close down, all of these indexes would be showing weakness of one form or another. Germany's DAX 30 is currently consolidating. Italy's index broke out of that resistance coming back to test it, looking a little bit weak at the moment. France's CAC 40 index is definitely on party mode. It's doing well. The ASX 200 from Australia is definitely throwing a shrimp on the barbie. It's doing well. Spain's index has shown a lot of weakness. It's seeking to recover, but it's got a bit of a way to go. The Swiss market is seeking to break out. Singapore's market, the STI, is showing a little bit of weakness currently. Overall, the markets are looking reasonably healthy. Let's have a look at monetary policy. We're really interested in interest rates, how the money is flowing around the economy, debt levels, and how different industrial sectors are behaving. The Fed Chair, Jerome Powell, 
said that substantial further progress was required before interest rates would increase or tapering would occur. He set a target of 0.25 for the effective federal funds rate. We can see we're currently at 0.1. It's good to keep you up to date with things like the real money stock. Here we see the money stock just decreased a little. There's currently a lot of liquidity in the banking and financial system. Reverse repos, uh, the actions of the Fed taking liquidity out of the system, we can see that liquidity extraction is decreasing. The Fed needs to take out excess liquidity when things get overheated. We can see the monetary base in total is increasing, just leveled off recently. The gross domestic product or GDP normalized for the US is still a long way to go before it reaches pre-COVID levels. A goal of the Fed is full employment. All employees, total non-farm employees, still have a long way to go before they reach pre-COVID levels. When they get up to this red area, we would expect discussions of tapering and increasing interest rates. Stock markets are driven by corporate profits after tax. We can see that they are increasing. Real personal consumption expenditures are really important to GDP. We can see that real personal consumption expenditures are increasing. A lot of economic commentators talk about the ISM manufacturing index. It's at 59.5 right now. It's decreased a little bit recently. Total public debt is increasing, but total public debt as a percent of GDP is decreasing. The unemployment rate is currently at 5.9%. Jerome Powell said when substantial further progress is made, liftoff can occur. Liftoff is tapering and increasing interest rates. There will be some advance notice given to the market. I predict advance notice will occur between these two red lines. Just trying to give out an early warning system for everyone. You can see the employment level is still below the pre-COVID employment level. When it gets up to around this green area, we can expect some degree of conversation about liftoff. The employment population ratio, 25 to 54 years of age, is still below the pre-COVID high. Total non-farm private payroll employment is below pre-COVID highs. The employment population ratio is below pre-COVID highs and away from that red area. We can see the CPI index for all urban consumers is increasing. The Fed has been very clear about an inflation rate target. They expect 2%. If we look at the five-year break-even inflation rate, it's currently 2.51%. The five-year forward inflation expectation rate is currently 2.25%, quite a way away from the 2% long-term price stability goal target from the Fed. The 10-year break-even inflation rate is 2.38%, quite a way away from the Fed's target of 2%. If we look at bonds, one thing to note is that bonds tend to spike up when there is a problem on the horizon. Generally, see, uh, we see a very sharp increase in bond prices. Right now, bonds are definitely on the increase. The 20 plus year Treasury bond ETF is also increasing. The 10 year Treasury note yield is backing off from that resistance under weakness. The 30 year Treasury bond yield is a little bit stronger, but still under resistance. High yield corporate bond ETF tends to sell off very dramatically if there are problems. We're not seeing any problems right now, but if we get pricing down into this red area, I think there would be cause to risk off. If we see weakness in the airline index, the XAL, especially a sharp sell off, that would signify us doing a risk-off event. So far, so good. 
the IYT transportation ETF tends to sell off dramatically if there are any health related problems. So far we see it coming back up to support. That's good. Utilities also tend to spike upwards if there is a problem. So far we're seeing strengthening signs above this once resistance now turned to support. We're a little bit away from any problematic situation right now. Gold is currently above that resistance. It broke through very, very well, but it's come back to retest that support. Silver is moving away from this pre-warning zone up to resistance. That's a great sign. Copper is particularly sensitive to economic, macroeconomic movements. If copper sells off violently into this pre-warning area, we could have concern for a risk off event. Risk off just means that it could be good to transfer some of your portfolio to cash, but we would want to see an alignment between all sorts of indicators. That's why we need to look at it every day. If we just ignore it until it's a problem, it could well be too late. Copper has current, currently sold off from that one support broken through and is seeking to retest this support underneath. China Coal is currently testing this support. When economic problems hit, Brent oil tends to sell off pretty violently. I put a pre-warning zone in here. We're quite a way above that at the moment in terms of price. It's just under resistance. The same is true for light crude oil. It tends to spike down dramatically if there's an economic problem. We're not seeing that right now. It's just below resistance. If the economy becomes problematic, we would expect the DXY to rally up sharply. I put a pre-warning zone here. We can see the dollar has crossed resistance, come back and retested this support. It's just deciding what it wants to do. We now have a really good understanding of the macroeconomic picture. Everything looks healthy for the time being. Let's look into the top performing stocks and then look into crypto. This is all part of our crypto stocks, the early warning system. We can see Apple has done well, is holding this support quite well. Microsoft is showing a little bit of weakness just below resistance. Google is seeking to turn this resistance into support. Amazon.com experienced quite a harsh sell-off. It's just coming up to resistance. Facebook is showing weakness. It's just at that lower boundary of support. Tesla has 42,902 Bitcoin. It's rallying currently. It broke out of resistance and it's above resistance right now. Turned it into support. Nvidia is above support. PayPal had a lot of weakness recently. It's just at that lower end of support. Netflix is looking weak. It's just challenging that downward level of support currently. Square has 8,027 Bitcoin. It's seeking to get above this previous high. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Across the market, across ETFs, countries, public companies and private companies, there is a total of 1,474,840 Bitcoin held across those four areas. We can see that Bitcoin challenged this structural resistance up here, but it's since backed off. That's very normal. Having such a good wave up, we expected a wave down. That's just normal price action. As regular community members know, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So when we look at crypto total market cap, what Bitcoin does, the alts do as well. Total crypto market cap is $1.526 trillion. It's just testing that support right now. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has 654,600 Bitcoin. It's currently below support. Canada's Bitcoin fund, QBTC, holds currently 13,000 Bitcoins. 
is just making its way back to the support line. BitC CoinShares physical Bitcoin holds 48,466 Bitcoin. It's just above support. Purpose Bitcoin ETF BTCC.B has 22,411 Bitcoin, is just retracing to support. ARK Innovation ETF ARK is currently consolidating. Coinbase Global Coin with 4,482 Bitcoin is just below this support, which is now resistance and below that resistance as well. Galaxy Digital GLXY has 16,400 Bitcoin. It is under resistance. MicroStrategy holds 105,085 Bitcoin. It is above support. Riot Blockchain holds 2243 Bitcoin. It's below resistance currently. Silvergate Capital Corporation SI is below resistance. Mara Marathon Digital Holdings holds 5,784 Bitcoin. It's currently under resistance. Voyager Digital holds 12,260 Bitcoin. It's just at resistance. Trying to make it into support. Hive Blockchain HVBT holds 1033 Bitcoin. It's currently under resistance. Bitfarm Limiteds Bit F currently has 1445 Bitcoin. It is above resistance. ARB Argo Blockchain has 1108 Bitcoin. It's currently above resistance and has converted that into support. It is now consolidating around that level. BitDigital BTBT has 1000 Bitcoin. It's looking good. ADE, the Bitcoin Group SE, has 3,947 Bitcoin. It's currently just under resistance. HUT8 Mining Group, HUT, has 3,522 Bitcoin. It's currently... Let's hop into the early warning system on crypto alts. Just to let you know what's happening here, I've taken the positive movers for the past seven days and the greatest losses for the past seven days from the start of the week. We can track how they're going, if they continue in strength or if they break down. It's quite a useful thing to do. Let's have a look at Rune. Rune is above support. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see more easily. Anchor rallied up, is coming back, but it's above support. Neo rallied up, it's coming back to support. Sia coin was doing really well four days ago, just spiked up, but it's coming back to support. Luna rallied up very strongly. It's above support, just doing a minor retrace. We would expect that because all alts cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. They eventually are pulled in the direction of Bitcoin. Dot was doing well, but it's sold off and it's now under this resistance. Quant continues to do well and it's above this support. Bitcoin Gold is below that resistance. Link is at support. Sol is doing quite well. It's above two levels of support. DGB is under resistance. XRP is currently under resistance. 0x ZR X is at support. Uni is below resistance. Tel is at support. T Fuel has broken down. ICP continues to break down. MDX has the first signs of consolidation through here. Sushi is also showing signs of consolidation. Algorand is showing signs of weakness. Doge is showing signs of weakness. Comp is consolidating, making a play for that once, well, for that resistance line directly above. Shib is under resistance, 
we know the price is always moving in a way it's going up and then down up and then down we would expect SHIB to come up at some stage. Theta is showing some strength here. If you look at Bitcoin's fingerprint, Bitcoin was selling off. Theta is consolidating just below that resistance. That's actually quite a good sign. Harmony 1, we can see that particular wave pattern is going upwards. That's showing a little bit of strength, but it's still below resistance. Matic is below resistance. We can see Decentraland holding this support and seeking to consolidate through there. IOTA is below resistance. ICON, ICX was performing well. It's just literally consolidating. It's just a little bit below resistance currently. SNX is below resistance. Phantom, FTM is below resistance. Axie Infinity is above this support, just consolidating through here. You can see how many of the patterns play out. That's why I love to take you through all of this. You get to recognize different patterns. It's very, very powerful. Carver is under this resistance, but what I see here is there was a degree of consolidation, some quite strong movements, a normal price retrace. Always keep in mind, that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. As Bitcoin was coming down, alts came down as well. It's just a normal part of the crypto market. Tomo Chain continues to show strength. It is under this resistance, but it's consolidating. You can see this consolidation through here, consolidation through here. STX stacks is continuing to test this resistance line. It's got latent power here. You can see it in those tails. We'll go through these remaining alts in the timing episode. I hope you found the content useful. Everything I do for you is free. Please be aware of scammers. Thank you to our moderators for keeping our community safe. I do these videos to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from. And of course, if you have any questions, this is really a community run channel. I'm here to help you with whatever questions you have. Just please let me know in the comments and I would happily incorporate that either into a separate video or just layer it through existing relevant videos. If you would like twice daily updates, seven days a week on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube, join us on Facebook and Discord, and you can also follow me on Twitter. All of the groups are free and you can reach out to me at any stage. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and the worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.